It was the most virulent, deadly viral outbreak the world had ever seen. When the affliction began to finally relent, two-thirds of the planet's population, 4.2 billion people, were gone. For those left after, the new epidemic was one of moral degradation, survival by any and all means, a pandemic of the inhumane. But small patches of hope sprouted from the fallow ashes of what once was. And for some, our humanity remained the only thing worth fighting for. Reverend? Good morning, Kate. The sun has risen. The sun has risen. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I just wanted to thank you for what you've done for Fox. I know how guarded he is, and he never asks for help when he needs it. He's had a really hard life, but since he's been here, I mean, I know it's only been a week, but he's almost a completely different person. So thank you again. Well, thank you for your kind words, but I haven't done anything for Mr. Fox. I'm just a conduit for his will. He has something special in mind for Mr. Fox. I'm certain of it. I am too. Still, you clearly saw something wasn't right with him, and you did something none of us could do. You reached him. I just, I can't... You make it sound like you performed some sort of miracle. You did, kind of. I mean, just getting Fox to have any conversation is near impossible. Kate, I really do appreciate your gratitude, but like I said, I didn't do anything extraordinary. Mr. Fox came to this choice of his own free will, and he still has a very long way to go. I think he's going to need us more than he even realizes. Do you remember what I told you when you first got here? About all of us having a purpose? Of course. I'm beginning to believe that your purpose is to help me. I think you were sent here to help me help others. You see, I'm only one person, and our flock is growing here. It's becoming more and more difficult to see that everyone is provided for, not just with food and shelter, but with spiritual guidance. Maybe you could help me with that. (laughs) Yes. Yes, of course. I'm so thrilled you'd even ask me. I mean, there are so many people here who know you better and... That may be so, but it's not their purpose. And if I'm being honest, Kate, I've never seen the kind of devotion that you have. To your friends and to your faith. We need someone like you here. Someone people can come to who will guide them to grace. Now, it'll require that you and I spend more time together. You'll need to help keep me updated on the goings-on. And I want to make sure that you understand what it takes to serve him. Of course, anything you need. Kate, there you are. I have been looking all over for you. The sun has risen, son. I really needed to talk to you. Sure, what's up? Not here. Why? Just tell us what's on your mind. Maybe I can help, son. Don't call me that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend. Just don't. Kate, please. All right, fine. Excuse me, please, Reverend. I'll be here. Matt, that was extremely rude. The Reverend offered to help you, and you practically spit in his face. I don't trust him, Kate. He's not a preacher or some kind of divine prophet. He's a con man. That's all. Ugh, here we go again. I'm serious, Kate. Look, I know you think I'm being overly cautious or whatever, and I admit that I might have been more than a little mistrusting, but I am not wrong about this. Stencil is playing us. So you keep saying, but do you have any proof? Any proof at all? Nothing. Nothing concrete. But if you just take a step back and look at the bigger picture here, you will see that I am absolutely... Uh, Matt! This isn't the first community these people have absorbed. I asked Ken, and he told me that Calhoun didn't want them here at all. He tried running them off a few times and was about to ask us for help again. You remember those missionaries we handled a few months back? They were part of Stencil's group. They were scouting this place. Matt, are you even listening to yourself? You sound crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not. I'm telling you. That we're being played here. Stop it, Matt. Just stop it, all right? I don't understand why you're so bothered by all of this. Why can't you see how much good is coming from this place? I mean, look at Fox. Exactly! Look at Fox! In all the years I've known him, he's been standoffish, untrusting, and apathetic to almost everyone he meets. 
People have to earn his trust, and it usually takes a really long time. But after one night, one single conversation, he's suddenly best buds with the Reverend? Are you jealous? Jealous? What are you talking about? You and Fox have been at each other's throats since he came back, and because you've both been too macho or immature or both, you won't talk about your problems. Fox clearly needed help with something, and the Reverend actually listened to him. And now you're jealous because it should have been you that he came to for help, and it wasn't. Damn it, Kate! Why? <sighs> Look, this guy is preying on you. He's using your guilt over what happened on Swan Island against you. That's not what's happening, Matt. Okay, fine. Then please, explain to me. What is it you think he's doing? Reverend Stencil is helping me to understand my path. Your path? Yes, the path God laid out for me. Look, ever since the fall, I have had this little seed of doubt in my heart, like maybe God had forsaken all of us. And after what I did on Swan Island, I couldn't understand how I could possibly take a life in cold blood like that. I've always tried to be a good person, but but I took a man's life, Matt. A man who was going to kill you. Was he? You don't know that. You weren't even there. The Reverend thinks it might have just been a test. God was testing me and I failed because I was too afraid to die. I didn't trust that God was watching over me and that there were other options. I was just too scared to see them. Reverend Stencils helped me to understand how I failed God and now I have a much better understanding of what it is he wants from me. What God wants or what Stencil wants? Okay, look, I have had about enough of you. All you've done since we got here is look for trouble, and every time the Reverend is near you, you act as if he's trying to poison you or something. You haven't given any of this a fair chance, and frankly, I'm sick of arguing with you. You are becoming this huge burden on me, and I am really tired of it. Is that... Is that what you think? I'm so sorry. No, that's not what I meant. Matt, where are you going? Some place where I'm not a burden on anyone. Matt! Matt, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Ugh, another fantastic job, Kate. going fox you know i sometimes forget how nice it is out here when we're back at homestead it's just hard to see the forest through the trees you know whatever okay look i've never liked being the go-between so i'm just gonna come out and tell you that kate's really worried and she asked me to come talk to you so why don't you tell me what's going on and... Hold up. Are you really here because Kate asked you or because you're asking? Kate asked me. Well, at least you're loyal to someone. And what's that supposed to mean? You know exactly what it means. Since you've been back, you've criticized, demeaned, and belittled me at every turn. Not once have you bothered to at least listen to anything I might have to say about wh When have you even tried talking to me? Oh, don't try that with me. It's a load of crap and you know it. You've avoided any possibility for us to sit down and talk. You do your best to avoid any sort of confrontation just like you always have. Well, buddy, I know you better than anyone. And I'm not letting you get away with it. Not this time. Okay. Fine. You want to talk? Let's talk. Let's talk about how you're acting here. Let's talk about how your paranoia is driving a wedge between you and Kate and how your issues with Reverend Stencil, whatever they are, are alienating you from everyone in this community. These are good people, Matt, and they could really use you here. 
It's what they want to use me for that has me worried. What are you talking about? The Reverend is a con man. He's lying to all of us. About what? About everything. He's lying about what happened to Calhoun. Yeah, Kate told me your theory. You knew Calhoun. Do you really think he'd kill himself? No, but that doesn't mean he didn't. Oh, for crying out loud, you remember Gillis? That guy in our squad during our first tour. Did he seem like the type? He just got married, had that adorable baby girl, and we found him in the shower cutting his own wrists. So how is Calhoun different? It is! It's totally different! Fine. Fine. It's different. You know, it wasn't that long ago you would have believed me without question. It wasn't that long ago that you would have given me more to go on than just a feeling. What did he do to you, Jake? How the hell did he get inside your head? I know we have our problems right now, but there was a time you would have seen through this BS faster than Wheeler. The only thing he did was to help me face things I didn't want to. The same thing you used to do. Buddy, I know these last couple of years have been rough, but... I don't want to hear it, Jake. Is it possible... That maybe you just don't like the Reverend because he's helping Kate through what happened at Swan Island and you wanted to be the one who did that because you thought it would strengthen your bond or something? That maybe, just maybe, you're acting this way because you're jealous or you're afraid of losing her. That's not it. That's not what's going on here. I know you don't want to hear this and I hate to be the one to have to tell you, but... You have to accept that things are changing. Kate's in a good place, and, and I'm starting to be in a good place. We're all in a good place, and if you keep this up, you're going to lose everything. You should think about that. You, you really think we're in a good place? I think we're getting there. Funny. I don't see Jamie around. What's that supposed to mean? If you really don't know, then I feel sorry for you. Excuse me, but I've got things to do. Hey there, Cohen. I'd like to talk to you about something. You got a minute? No offense, but I really don't want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, you've made that pretty clear over the last few days, and that's part of what I'd like to talk about. You see, I... I hate to say this, but you're sort of disturbing the harmony that we have here. You're really upsetting our girl, Kate. Our girl? She feels really horrible for what she said to you earlier. When I found her, she was crying pretty bad, and it took a while to calm her down, and that's when she told me that she thinks that you won't forgive her. For telling you the truth about how she feels. And Mr. Fox, well, that boy cares a lot about you. But I find myself wondering if you feel the same for them. You sanctimonious son of a... How'd you do it? Excuse me? I really need to know how you managed to get into her head and twist her up like that. Kate, she's one of the strongest people I've ever known. And after just a few days, you've completely unraveled her. And Fox? I've known that guy over half my life now and sometimes still have trouble breaking through his walls. So you got to tell me. You got to tell me how you got him to follow you like a lost puppy. I just need to know how you did it. Son, I don't know that... I told you not to call me that. You don't get... To call me that. All right. Matthew, I'm, I'm sorry. All I want to do here is help you, but for some reason you only see me as some kind of enemy. Maybe it's because of everything you went through in the service to your country, or maybe everything you've done since the fall. But it's left you with some serious trust issues. I'm not a wicked man, Matthew. I'm just like you. I'm just doing what I can to help people. I mean... Can you stand there and look me in the eye and tell me it's a bad thing wanting to guide people into his light? Can you honestly tell me that I'm wrong for teaching his word? 
No. If that's true, then no. And I would owe you a huge apology. But we both know that's not what's happening here. I'm not an idiot. The way people act and look at you. That ain't love or gratitude in their eyes. That's fear. The people around here are afraid of you. And I just can't figure out why. Because when I look at you, I don't see much. Which means you've got something on them. Some sort of threat. So what is it? I don't have anything over anyone. And every one of them is free to come and go as they please. I'm not holding anyone hostage or forcing them to stay in any way. They're here because they want to be here. They're here because they want to feel his love and live in peace. But you, you don't seem to want that. <laughs> don't try it. Don't try and get into my head. <laughs> this, is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You're consumed with this paranoid delusion that I'm only out there to get you in some way. You're trying to find some sort of horrible conspiracy where there isn't any. And I believe... It's because you're too afraid to look inside and see that maybe, maybe, maybe you're the problem. Maybe you're the one driving the people you care away because you feel like you can't protect them. That maybe you're not good enough for them anymore. Reverend, you're about three words away from meeting him. I'm really sorry, but I think it'd be best for everyone's peace of mind if maybe you went back to your camp up north. No, <laughs> oh, I'm not going anywhere until I get to the bottom of all this. I'm asking you to leave. Don't make this more difficult. Are you threatening me? Goodbye, Mr. Cohen. Hey, Cohen. I've been looking for you. Hey, Alan. What's up? I just wanted to let you know that you don't have to sleep in that ratty tent anymore. We finished 17 of the cabins today, and we've started putting people in them. <laughs> nice job. Thanks. I, I think we're going to get another 20 or so done tomorrow. Things are really coming along. I mean, they're not much, but... Hey, don't downplay it, Alan. You've done really good work, and I know these people will really appreciate a dry place to sleep this winter. Thanks. You should get some sleep, buddy. You're looking pretty exhausted. I really am, but it's worth it. I, I haven't felt this good about a project since before the fall. I'll see you in the morning. Oh, yeah, you're in number 10, down that way. Cool. Did you tell Kate? Uh, no. Uh, the Reverend said he would tell her. All right. Well, good night, Alan. Good night. Remember, number 10. I got it. Well, this is pretty nice. Alan did a great job. Maybe I'll get him to design a house one day. Holy shit! Must be cleansed! Must be cleansed! off of me! No, oh, no, you don't! You get burned! Be Oh! Oh my god, what was that? What's going on here? Going! Are you alright? What? Holy, is that what I think it is? Yeah! Yeah, it's a ghoul! Are you freaking kidding me? Dude, we haven't seen a ghoul in... Like, nearly a year. Huh? Matt? Oh my god, are you alright? What happened? There was a ghoul in his cabin. Wait, th that's not your cabin. We're in number four up there. Didn't Alan tell you? No. No, he told me it was ten. Well, maybe it was a mix-up. Hey, can we focus on the fact there was a ghoul in there? I mean, where did it come from? I... I think I have a good idea.
a freaking ghoul shows up and Cohen? God! Jesus! Okay. Okay. Now I get why Kate hates it when I do that. <sighs> Are you alright? You look... Well, you look like I just scared the pants off of you. But before, you looked ready to spit nails. I'm not really sure how to answer that right now. I heard about what happened last night. Are you okay? No. I mean, physically, yeah, I'm fine. But I am really pissed off right now. You'd think after what happened last night, Kate and Fox would finally be willing to hear me out. But oh, no. It was just a weird coincidence that a ghoul found its way into the cabin I was assigned and right after the good reverend asked me to leave. Wait, wait. Did you just say the reverend told you to leave? Well, he didn't tell me to leave, but it was strongly suggested. And then you got attacked? Yeah. Why? Did he... Did he say anything about you needing to be cleansed? Uh, no. But the ghoul did. I have to go. Shauna, wait! What, what's going on? I need to go. And you should too. You're not safe. Not anymore. What are you talking about? I... I can't. Please, don't ask me anymore. Shauna, look, I know you know what's going on. Please tell me. Let go of me. I can't be near you. If anyone sees, if he thinks, I just... What? What are you so afraid of? Cohen, please, just go away. Do like the Reverend said, and go away. Shauna, I am begging you. Look, I am on my knees here. Please, just... Tell me what's going on here! I can't. Don't you get it? If the Reverend even thinks I'm helping you, just... Forget your friends and get away from here. It's too late to help them anyway. Once he gets inside your head, he can bend you any which way he wants. He makes himself look like some kind of divine saint with a direct line to God, but he only gives you nuggets of hope to feed on. And it doesn't take very long before you're begging him for more. Like some kind of addict. I don't know how he does it, but I've seen it happen to so many people. And the ones he keeps close, like your friends, he only keeps them because they have something he wants. Once he's done with them, he takes them away to be cleansed. Okay, what does that mean? That ghoul kept repeating it, and when you say it, it sounds really awful. It's a punishment. The worst kind of punishment. Those who falter before him must be cleansed by the unseen. Who are the unseen? I can't help you, okay? No one can help. He's got eyes and ears everywhere, and if anyone tells him that I was talking to you, especially in secret like this... I'm sorry, Cohen. I, I really am. Okay. All right. Cohen, I mean, this with all sincerity. If the Reverend really offered you the chance to leave, you should take it. Get as far away from here as you can and never come back. I can't do that. My people would never abandon me, and I'm not about to leave without them. Not like this. I guess there's no point in trying to convince you to change your mind. No. But I appreciate your concern. Thank you. You're a stronger person than I am. If I had the chance, I'd get away from here as fast as possible. Maybe I'd go to Canby. I'd love to go to the fair. What fair? The Clackamas County Fair. There was always so much to see. The rides and the food, and especially the animals. You could always find something interesting at the fair, especially in the animal pens. You have been talking a lot about the fair these past few days. Yeah, I guess I have been. Isn't that interesting? Where are you going? I told you. I can't be seen with you, or he might think I've helped you. I'm sorry, Cohen. Uh, you know, maybe I should go back to Homestead. 
I can grab Casey and come back here and wipe that smug, self-righteous smirk off the reverend's face for good. And then everyone would see... Crap, I'm doing it again. Why do I keep talking to myself? <sighs> okay. I just need to figure this out. Shauna was completely freaked out at the idea that someone might think she helped me. The reverend tells me to go, and then a ghoul just happens to be in the cabin I'm assigned. But it turns out it wasn't my cabin. And, and Shauna also freaked out when I said the ghoul kept saying I needed to be cleansed. But then she started talking about that stupid fair again. Now is something interesting at the fair? Bunch of crap. What's interesting to me is how a goddamn ghoul got onto the farm and into the cabin without anyone seeing. Wait a minute. Could that ghoul... And if it was... Then it means that... She said the pens, right? The animal pens in the big red barn. You can always find answers at the fair. Oh! Oh! I'm a freaking moron! Homestead, Episode 8, Must Be Cleansed. Written, directed, and produced by James Robinson. Story by James Robinson, Travis Box, and Danny Hedham. Music by Me You. This episode starred Travis Box as Cohen, Summer Shore as Kate, Danny Hedham as Wheeler, Justin Mansfield as Alan, James Robinson as Fox, Brittany Jones as Shauna, and Dave Scott as Reverend Stinsel. Homestead is a Not Another Podcast production.